Y'all ready to be history? Get started. Welcome. Hi. 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 Hello, everyone. To the Pro Audio Suite. These guys are professional. They're motivated. Thanks to Tribooth, the best vocal booth for home or on the road voice recording. Introducing Robert Marshall from Source Elements and Someone Audio Post, Chicago. Darren Robert Robertson from Voodoo Radio Imaging, Sydney. Tech to the VO Stars. George the Tech Whitam from LA. And me, Andrew Peters, voiceover talent and home studio guy. Right now, Welcome to another Pro Audio Suite podcast. This week, we're putting Robert on the spot because we have a special guest, Pip Atherson-Reed, who runs a studio in Melbourne, Australia, uh, called Windmill Audio. Pip's been talking to me about some things with Source Connect, and I thought, well, why don't you just get him on the show and get him in front of Robert and fire a few questions. So, welcome, Pip. Thank you very much, Andrew Peters. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Um <laughs> I'm going to fire one question off because I saw something on Facebook yesterday and they were talking about a mute button. Now, I did notice on Source Connect Pro, there is a mute button on the send and receive, but there isn't on standard. So is there something like that coming for Source Connect 4, Robert? Maybe. (laughs) (laughs) There is now. I'd be surprised if it's there when Source Connect 4 comes out. Hey, just a thought, Robert. Tell me if this this would work. Couldn't he change the input from his mic you to something else? can change the input. Yeah. yeah. You can do that. Yeah. It, yeah. it was funny. Like, like early on, it was one of those things like, let's remove everything that someone could mess up. <laughs> and that was like one of them. But um, it's been asked for and, and I'm, it's kind of a standard thing. So, like I said, I wouldn't be surprised if it finds its way into Source Connect 4 for the standard level. Beautiful. Okay, Pip, fire a question. Since COVID, there was a, a, a big uptake in Source Connect, particularly for voiceover artists, so they could connect straight in, work remotely. And one thing that I found is that all of their, their port openings and, and their mapping, um, they hadn't gone through that process. And so it, it results to, uh, what's it called? Source Stream. Source Stream. Source Stream. Yeah. I know you have uh, IT set up to help people with that, but for people that don't have any kind of technical nous, um, how do you make that process easier for particularly voiceover artists? They're they're really good at, Not at their, doing it properly. <laughs> well, they shouldn't be expected to have that no, technical. Yeah. You know, it's it's not easy. I mean, mm-hmm. SourceStream makes it easy, but it kind of creates a less than ideal route through the internet. And essentially, what Source Connect does is it logs in and it first asks for a port using a protocol called the UPnP, which is a universal plug and play. If your router is set up for that. And if it's working, which is one of those things that doesn't always work because not all routers implement it the same or correctly or whatever. So I've seen it where it doesn't work, but it's a nice idea at least. And it works. And when it works, it's great. Then it just asks for a port and it gets the port. If Source Connect can't get through with that method, it will basically try to trick its way through. Um, But the problem with the trick is that if both parties don't have their port mapped, it doesn't help the situation at all. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. you get a higher rate of failure if both parties don't have their port map than if just one has their port map. Then we can get our foot in the door. Um, but ultimately, if the port's not mapped and the firewall is too smart to fall for our tricks, then you might not receive audio. The port is, rece- is specifically your ability to receive audio because most routers don't block outbound traffic. They're usually blocking what comes back or what mm-hmm. comes in. So if that doesn't work, then it's off to Source Stream, which is a newer feature of Source Connect and not supported. And it's really just in 3.9 and going forward. So if, if you're connecting with someone older, then that's not even an arrow and it's quiver. Mm. Um, and as far as like actually opening up your ports and doing it without tech support, uh, there's a website called portforward.com. And Source Connect is one of the listed applications, and they have instructions for pretty much every router on Earth at this point. But you still have to be able to, you know, trudge through it and follow a set of instructions. Hmm. And typically, one of the hardest things for people is that they just don't even know the password to their router. That's right. Or, or the that. other thing that they do is they, like, the cable company gives them a router with Wi-Fi, and they charge them for that monthly. By the way. And then they go to Best Buy and they buy some Euro home mesh network, which is basically like putting a router in front of a router. So you Mm. create what I call the turducken of networks. Uh, And now you've doubled up your problem because now you have two networks to get through. 
or, or two networks to port forward on. So um, there's all kinds of ways to make it messier. Um, but actually, I don't based know if that on that, so your question. You, you talk about get doubling up with a router. So if I've got a router here, but I um, run an Ethernet cable out and run an airport, an Apple airport off that, is that doubling or is two that routers. just. routers. And the airport's a router. Hmm. So it yep. is doubling up the router. Definitely. Okay. Interesting. And does bridging bridging the second router fix that? Well, right. If you put a, mout, a router in bridge mode, then it's not acting like a second. It, it just goes it's, straight through, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You're, you've dumbed it down to a modem, basically. Yeah, yeah. And so, so, so stream. How how does that compare to if you do have your ports open, quality wise? And 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 the, the uh, quality of everything's and, the same. It's just that you're going through more mileage. You're, you, you are traveling through our server before you get to whoever you're going to. So I understand. We have yeah. servers throughout the world, and ideally we actually have one in between the two of you. But there's going to be a use case where two people are in, like, Pipsqueak, Iowa. Sorry, anybody who lives <laughs> in Iowa? And, <laughs> and they're, like, three blocks from each other, and the most ideal route would be, like, not even leaving Iowa, let alone pipsqueak iowa but because they are using source stream possibly they're going all the way to wherever our closest server might be which might be chicago or i I think we have three across the u.s essentially so that would be an obvious case where you're adding mileage to the connection so you're just Um, adding adding delay to to the conversation delay and you're adding possible points of failure sure Um, yeah because you're just going through more peering points. And even though the public internet is supposed to work great because it works on best effort, the corporate translation of best effort is least effort. And yeah. So, yeah, that's, that's, I, that's why you do want to try to allow it to try to make that as the bird flies through the internet connection instead of through the server, which it doesn't always go through the server, but if you don't have port forwarding, you're definitely increasing the chances of needing to rely on the server. Because at the moment we have Pip in studio in Melbourne, we have Robbo at his place in Sydney, we have me at my place in out of Melbourne, down Where the coast. Are you? And I'm home. <laughs> I'm not allowed out. Um, yeah. We have George in Los Angeles and you in Chicago. What's the yeah. map of this thing look like? Well, we're all going through ports so we're all peer-to-peer directly to Robo on the source connect side and on the source connect now side you, you don't know it's just sort of you know some of us might or might not be going through ports i, I don't even know how to be able to tell that but mm-hmm. source connect now has got a has got a relay server which is what the source stream system is but like source connect now doesn't even bother asking you to try to map your ports it's like it's i'm, I'm gonna go straight to trying to kick the walls down. And if I can't kick the walls down, I relay through the server. And there isn't any option to open your ports. There's no option to use UPnP either. So it it really goes to the last two options immediately. But it's Source Connect now. I think that like with Source Connect, the the fact that it's able to um, at least give you the option to be able to establish the most direct connection is... uh, is a good thing. I suppose moving on to something a little bit bigger, um, we did a job last year where, uh, due to COVID, it was a co-production between um, between Australia and New Zealand Film Finance. Everyone was stuck in a studio in Auckland, uh, and we used Source Connect Pro X uh, mm-hmm. with its six channels. Worked an absolute treat, which was amazing. But uh, more and more, all of these video on demand places are demanding Dolby Atmos from us. Can you do Atmos? Is the question. Can you do Atmos? Yes. You, or will you, you be able to? You will, you'll be able to do it better, but what you can do right now is you can fire up two copies of Source Connect Pro X, thus giving you ah. 14 in the clear channels. Ah, right. And then you connect to the other person running two copies of it, and you send a beep down all 14 channels, and they may or may not arrive in time, but you can put a delay line on the earlier arriving one, synchronize it up, you know, you can measure your time and then synchronize it up. And then in Source Connect, everyone can go select the fixed buffer option and it'll lock in the time. And now you can send them 14 discrete channels, which should be enough for like 714, something like that. And, and you have to uh, manually delay compensate or it will do that for you? You have to manually delay compensate between the two channels, between yeah. the two pairs of 14 channels. Yeah. There you go. So, so you do your 7-1 base on one system and then you do your height channels on the other one. Yeah. 
Um, and, and it's pre-rendered Atmos, so you can't like send them just a bunch of objects and expect them to hit that with their RMU and yeah, yeah. re-render it. It's sending a, a sort of, so to speak, flattened. Um, well, it's Atmos essentially thing. you're sending what you're sending to the amps, I suppose. So you you send pretty much your, yeah. Your, your, if, yeah. if, assuming your your speaker setup matches their speaker setup, right? It's oh, interesting. Yeah, and then and then you're using be, be, because you're sp- you're spread across two source connects, you're using time code for pi- for picture sync instead of remote transport sync. Do you need another track for that? You need another channel for that. So that's yeah. one of your fourteen. Yep. You you, you technically have fourteen dot two. Is that what there you, you used when you did the um the session with the uh, the orchestra in Vienna? I, I just did seven. I, I just did five one with them. I didn't do Atmos, so I just used one source connect. But yes, besides that, it was the same version. But I used RTS and five one. I did not use time code and two copies of seven one. Well, it's a it's it's, it's like a it's a setup for the brave. But you can definitely do yeah, picture yeah, yeah. lock and Atmos with it. And and there's a couple cases we've had. It's you know usually like some big wig is coming in and there's a day and a half of setup beforehand <laughs> mm, mm, you know mm. it's like a it's a thing there's a bit in it but it can be done yeah. the other thing that's really interesting about rts is that it can actually make chairs fly across rooms <laughs> <laughs> it's incredible that <laughs> behave andrew <laughs> behave <laughs> I don't yeah. think it was RTS that was making me mad. That would be, R- R- that would be yeah. RST, which means remote stool toss. <laughs> yeah, <that's right. laughs> Is that what monkeys do? Yeah, you're confused. <laughs> if you're tossing yes, stools, then you're in the shit. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's, what, that's what monkeys do. Yeah. Uh, classic. A lot of my my questions were around getting artists set up and um, uh, people that without that tech savviness. Uh, but you did mention the tutorials and and the, or not the tutorials, but the um, website with all the um, details of different routers. Um, it would, you know what would be really handy for that this kind of stuff where you've got people like me at one end who are yeah, pretty clueless when it comes to technical stuff, and an engineer at the other end is that. Instead of me looking at Source Connect on my machine, uh, it actually is copied into your machine. So then you yeah, actually control everything at my end. Mm. We have um, that's one of the desired features. It's not going to be in 4.0, but that's like the ability to change someone else's settings. Yeah, when appropriate, yeah. when secure. That's going to um, that's come up before, and we. Pip, I don't know about you, but yeah. here's when I'm mm. doing remote sessions and obviously a bit like you, I've been doing a lot more over the last couple of years We're using Source Connect. Yeah. Here's one question that I get a lot and maybe it would be useful for Robert to answer this one as well. Maybe he can put it in better terms than I can. But why mm. do you need to set up your ports, Robert? What does it do? Why do I need to do it? So think of it this way. Your internet service provider is providing you a plot of land on the street called the internet, the public internet. There's other internets as well, but the public internet. Someone needs to send you a message. And so they address it to your address for that plot of land. And boom, there it is. It arrives. But you want to take your plot of land, which is your access to the street called internet, and you want to have 50 computers using that same internet connection. So now on your plot of land, you build an apartment building for each one of your computers. And in order to do that, you basically put a router up in front of your internet connection. That's what the router is. It's a way of letting more than one person live on that internet connection. So now you send a piece of mail to that router, and if it doesn't have its port forwarding or the appropriate apartment number addressed on it, it just sits there at the lobby hoping that someone knows what to do with it, which they may or may not know. And then you may or may not get your message. But if it's addressed properly with port forwarding, it's going to go through. To your Ooh, apartment. I like that. That's mm, very, very clever. clever. Yeah, nice one. So, George, what's the common question you get asked about Source Connect when you're setting up home studios? Well, there was enough of them that I made a year, an hour and a half long video to answer them. <laughs> <Thank> <laughs> <goodness>. um, <laughs> can I have the copy? I did that, at the beginning of the pandemic. <laughs> yeah. and it was uh, very popular. <laughs> you can see it at. <laughs> it's only cost you. Was it fifty bucks? Hundred bucks? Yeah, really. Um, <laughs> No, I well, I mean, I'll start with the. Uh, I shouldn't use the word dumb. 
I just did. Yeah, um, did. We'll start there. <laughs> the dumbest question is, if I have Source Connect, does that make my studio professional? <laughs> just by transit no transit of property is meaning uh, it's in the bathroom but is it professional yeah yeah, yeah. It, it gives like, you a it gives you a professional means of connecting to other studios but there's right. a lot it's more to that it's a connection right it's yeah. Yeah. It, it doesn't by having it it doesn't mean your studio sounds like a commercial studio can i, can I tell you a story <laughs> yeah, it's story time it's podcasting sure. <laughs> we we have a, a voiceover gig we we won the audition we need to have source connect set up tomorrow because we have the sessions tomorrow you know we're helping them out get them set up with source connect installed launched ports open everything's great now you just need to um yeah just you know take that into your booth silence <laughs> booth <laughs> Yeah, what's that? I'm like, you do have a different location to put your microphone in because it sounds like you're in your kitchen. Oh, yeah, we're in our kitchen. <laughs> yeah. Uh, wow. Yeah. With yeah. a sleeping bag over my head. Not, yeah, not even I, that. I, I was, it sounds yeah. I was like, you know, you, you have, I don't know, Guitar Center closes at 5 o'clock and go... <laughs> buy all the oral X you can i mean i just explained to them the problem but i was like this is where i check out because yeah. i can't do anything for you other than tell you that you definitely need to like uh, whatever i told them like go find a clothes closet whatever you got to do Absolutely. is this like, a, is this yeah. where we should shamelessly plug and say they needed a try booth Oh yeah, yes. we could do that. Yeah, <laughs> well, that would have been very and, handy. And they could they could have got one for two hundred dollars less using the discount code. What is it, Andrew? PAP two hundred. PAP two hundred for two hundred yeah. off. There you go. Yeah, it uh, it's uh, that's what we invented it for for people that need a studio <laughs> instantly in any any place. Uh, yeah, it's it's a it's a strange new world. You know, we're we're thrusting people into these recording studio situations that have have an incredibly low aptitude for what they're doing it did they, mm. they just know mm. a studio has microphones and headphones and there's stuff on the walls right that's a studio yeah. right yeah but that's what's funny about it is that even when you're in a room and you hear someone speaking and then you if you even make a recording of that holding the recorder exactly where your head and your ears are and then you play that recording back I guarantee you it will sound more echoey than you remember it sounding when you were just standing there hearing it live. That's right. Mm, because yeah. your brain has a way of mentally killing the echo, mm. going, oh, I know what that is. I've separated it. If your eyes are there. If your eyes are there, right. You have to have the eyes there because you have to see and be in the environment, and then your brain will right. kind of and, and a video connect doesn't the dots do it. between them. Right. A video of it doesn't do it. Your eyes still don't, but somehow there's like echo removal when you're when it's live, and you always remember it being less echoey than when you hear that recording. Unless it's really bad, right? Unless yeah. it's so bad that the other person is unintelligible. Mm. And then it's just like, oh my gosh, I can't communicate at all. Right. But that yeah. doesn't happen that often, right? I mean, not, not that often. It, you know, it's like the classic one where the where they shoot the video of the CEO from across some table that's as long as Putin's table, and uh, <laughs> the guy puts a lavalier on the guy and sees in his video camera that the meter's moving. He's like, "Great, roll done." And then three days later, they look at the dailies, and it sounds like he's from you know three hundred feet away because he is because the guy never changed his video camera input to the external mic and left it on the built-in shoe oh, top yeah, mic. Yeah. Yeah. And then they're like, yeah. "Can you just remove the echo?" It's like, yeah. No. <laughs> there is <laughs> you are this will forever sound like crap. It's all echo. <laughs> yeah. That's all it is. Yeah. yeah. That's all you got. That's all you got. <laughs> yeah, so that I, mean, I mean, I know we're we're all having a laugh, but it's it's true that a lot of not a lot, but it happens that, that it's a question that comes up and it did enough that I actually made another video about that exact same thing. What does it mean to have a, a studio that's source connect quality or source connect ready? Um, so that's a big, that's a big, big, big one. And another mm. one is, well, how do I get ethernet into my booth? Um, right. do mm. I have to physically put a hole in the wall and pull cables or do I have to run one down the hallway? How do I do that? Yeah. And uh, this is like a one. hard one. I mean, it's like, I've, I've had many people say like, oh my, I, I have ethernet and you find out that they're really like running an extender and it's like a, it's like a, 
you know, Wi-Fi. It's actually up wireless over. in between, right? Yeah, or mm. or the, or they use the cable line, you know, the power line adapters, which I've seen some some of those work, and they I've seen some sometimes. of those not work. They and, work more than they don't. I've recommended them, but they're still all of it still second fiddle to the Ethernet real deal. R- I've told a cable. people this, like like you know, people who have like their modems in the basement on the northeast corner, and their studios in the attic on the southwest corner of the house. And how do you get an Ethernet cable there? And I've, it's like, do what your cable provider does. Go get a really long Ethernet cable, drill a hole in the basement wall, and pop <laughs> that cable out of the outside of your house, tuck it along the siding, clamp it up there, and then take the straightest line up to the second floor and drill another hole in the outside of your house. And That's what the cable, cable company through. does. That's what the cable company <laughs> does. And it's true. Running that cable on the outside is way the F easier yeah. than trying to go through how many walls? So that's that's another one, um, and then you know, well, I have really good Wi-Fi. Do I really need Ethernet? And then I use the analogy: Well, you're a really safe driver. Do you really need to wear a seatbelt? People yep. sort of get that. I, I'm big on analogies. You know, I use every analogy I can think of. Usually, analogies related to photography or video. It's a lot easier to understand concepts of focus, what it means for something to be in focus, and then say it sounds in focus. Um, yep. You know, mm-hmm. that, and light, light is acoustics, you know, like for photography, lighting is a big part of it. Well, and mirrors. sound acoustics keep, keep is a big part of it. Keep all the mirrors out of the room when you're trying to shoot a video. <laughs> right. Yeah. I just, those are all sort of the concepts I try to just really, you know, create that, that mental picture that people can start to grasp. And yeah. It, I mean, concepts that, that is a great, that is, that is a great way. You know, like, how do you explain echo? Like uh, in your booth, if you have like a really strong echo and it's messing with one frequency, like a bass frequency, or maybe you even have a high frequency ring because you have some hard surfaces in there. And it's like, right. that's kind of like glare in a way. Or not right, really, it's like but glare it, or, yeah, you're sitting in the living room and the sun's reflecting off that and it's going in your eyes. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like being blinded right now. What are you going to do? You're probably going to move. Or right. you're going to move, remove whatever's causing the reflection, one or the other. So... Yeah, these are all analogies that are a lot easier for non-audio engineer-centric folks to to grasp. And so I'll, I'll go that direction whenever whenever I feel it, it's going to help. I'm so sorry to interrupt. I need to step out for about a minute or so, all right? I'll be, uh, I'll be back in just a sec. Sure. Cue the music. Shouldn't it be the girl from Impanema? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I'm back. Oh, Pip's back. There yes, you go. yes. Okay. Sorry, I just. All right. So, Robbo, what's your question? Hang on, it's not mine. Uh, hang on, let me find. Uh... It's amazing what a good edit can do. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's too bad ours aren't good. <laughs> yeah, let's okay. put a, a nice sheen on this. Okay, here we go. Uh, well, I, I was doing a session with. Um, one of Australia's best known voiceover artists, I suppose, a guy called Lee Perry the other day. Uh, I was going to say the most highest paid voiceover guy in Australia. <laughs> well, I think he owns half of Bondi. Um, but yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, he's, and, he, and we were talking about something, and I, and I told him that we were doing this, this episode this week, and it was a Source Connect question. So, so here we go. He, sent, he put it down in an email, so I'll read it to you. He goes, Hi, Robbo. Great talking to you today. I was lucky enough to get a Starlink satellite dish for my farm in Canimbla a few months ago. Did we say he was earning a shitload of money? Great speeds of 280 megabytes per second, 25 up, and it's very rock solid to date, even during heavy storms. However, when I try to do a Source Connect session from the farm, I get the port not mapped message, and it doesn't default to Source Stream. I've only done one test session so far. Source Connect website currently says satellite sessions are not supported and mentioned latency issues as one of the problems. That might apply to NBN satellites, which notoriously have <laughs> high latency. However, the Starlink low-orbit satellites have extremely low lat- latency. I'm hoping Source Connect can sort these issues soon or advise another way around it. The last technician I spoke to from Source Connect in the US said it should automatically default to Source Stream. Thanks, mate, Lee. So there you go. Over to you. So 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 here's the issue. Um, remember the apartment building on the street called Internet? Yep. Yep. Starlink built an entire subdivision. 
<laughs> and they're putting yeah. you behind their private internet connection and then letting you out to the internet. Uh. So unless you can get Starlink to give you a public IP address, you will not get port forwarding from them. Wow. You, you need, you, and, that, and that's that probably possible? one of the few cases where you need a public static IP address. Because mm. if they give you a public, I mean, they, they might give you a public address. You don't necessarily need it to be static, but you need it to be public so that you can do your port forwarding from there. Huh. Well, there you go. And why would they do that? Is that just a security thing? So, one of the first problems is the whole internet's working off of IPv4, and it hasn't transitioned really over to IPv6. And IPv4 is a whole variety of numbers that are x dot x dot x dot x. And there's just that many computer, there's that many computers, just root connections on the internet. We're not even talking about your computer behind your firewall, right? There are so many connections to the internet that the world is running out of those IP addresses. So that's one reason why. The other reason why it's just less expensive and then also they have more control. Um, but probably given the way the satellites work, it'd probably be a lot harder. I'm, I'm not sure about this one, but it might be harder to get to put everyone behind a network connection and then bundle that network connection and send it up and down from the satellites compared to, there might be other networking reasons why it helps to put corral everything. The other one that does this is all your cell phone providers. Um, you rarely get a public IP address from the cell, uh, from the cell phone providers. You, you're put behind their connection. So basically you and your neighbor and a whole bunch of other people are all, are all showing up at the same public point on the internet and therefore, if they don't do the port forwarding to, to know which one of their customers needs to get it, then you don't get those ports. And the other the other reason why that's hard is because, particularly with Source Connect Standard, which runs with a fixed port, if you have 300 customers and two of them want to use Source Connect and you are willing to do the port forwarding, which one are you going to do it for? Because you can't do it for both at the same time yeah. mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. one internet, from one public IP address. So then you need Source Connect Pro, right? Well, even then, Source Connect Pro might not do it. If the internet service provider was willing to do the port forwarding from their access point, because they're keeping you on their private network, then if everyone inside their network had Source Connect Pro, then everyone could say, I'll take this port and I'll take that port. And ah, okay. they, they could divvy them up. It's the same thing as going to a hotel and using their Wi-Fi and then asking them to open up a port. They're just not going to do it for you. But just because it says port not mapped does not mean it's not going to work. Correct. It just means that it has its first choice method removed. Right. It, it's first two choices. So one thing that happens where you can confuse it, if, if you have UPnP on your router, Source Connect kind of thinks it got a port. It doesn't know that it didn't. And then when you hook up and it doesn't work, it doesn't know to kick over to Source Stream sometimes. There, there's some confusing situations where it might not always know that it has to fall to Source Stream. If you have Source Connect up as the upfront application, at the very top of the screen, there's a advanced menu option. And one of them says, use Source Stream. And it really should say, only use Source Stream. Basically, it means don't try any other method, just go to Source Stream. And the reason why that's needed sometimes is that if Source Connect, for some reason, doesn't figure out on its own that it needs to fall over to Source Stream, then that's the way that you can force it to use Source Stream. The downside of that is that if you select that option, you leave it selected, you're always going to use source stream, and then you won't be able to connect with someone who does not have source stream available to them, like someone using Source Connect 3.8. So it's always one that you want to check. If you have to use it, uncheck it so that you don't get stuck. I remember um, years ago, uh, and in fact, I believe the year was 2009, I was on one of the first voiceover event conventions I'd ever done was literally on a cruise ship. It was called Voice Olympics or something. And we took a cruise ship from Vancouver to LA. And my job was to make everything work on the ship for the, for the convention, you know, audio in all the rooms. It was, it was crazy. But my, uh, my buddy John, he was my roommate. We thought, Hey, let's try Source Connect. And I couldn't, I could not believe it. But even over the ship to shore internet connection that they've probably used from the ship, because you're, we're essentially, uh, in I, you know, we're, we're, we're within eye shot of the coast. Mm -hmm. The whole time, you know, um, we were able to use Source Connect on a cruise ship. Now, the the noise floor was unacceptable. I mean, totally. there's just no way you could get away with it, but it worked. And I was pretty, 
I was pretty amazed, you know. So, and, and you can't another get place the noise floor doesn't work is on an airplane. But Rebecca connected to me <laughs> yeah. on an airplane one time, and that yeah. we thought that we got a kick out of that. Yeah, really. Yeah, because the ports aren't going to be blocked by the airline. They don't know what's. No, 6, mo- most of these services they're not putting you behind a heavy duty firewall to protect you. They're putting a heavy. They're putting you behind their network to squeeze more out of what they have. QS and, quality of service. They want to make sure that everything that they need to work is work. It will work. Right. They can they can chop it up differently and better that way. Maybe better for themselves, but they can chop it up better. And and so it doesn't mean that they have a fire like their their firewalls, especially the cell phone firewalls, are usually pretty easy to trick. And I think that's on purpose because we're not the only people with this type of issue. If if you think about it, like every game, every peer to peer game. It's it's funny, you know. A long time ago, when we were making Source Connect, it was like you know, like some of the programmers that we were working with at the time had programmed games, and if you catch the right message in Source Connect, you will see a message about your opponent. Yeah, it's, uh, it's yeah, the yeah same that's thing. true. Yeah, yeah. We're not we're not the only industry that has all this. Like, I can't get through. And well, we I mean, if you've off actually of gone into a router to configure a port, if you've ever done it yourself. Yeah, it's like, Mind of Warcraft. Yeah, you'll yeah, see you have all the presets enormous for list games. of games yeah. right. uh, that are already in the router. Yeah, so so you didn't know that your clients are your opponent, but they are. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> That's you cannot establish well, a direct like connection opponent. to your opponent. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. I think in a lot of cases they are, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so I suppose a, a simple question would be, you know, for, especially for voiceover artists, is there nothing wrong with just relying on source stream if you're not, if you're not experiencing massive delays? Um, and even if you are, there, you know, do you just deal with it? If it's like the old thing. If there's no problem, then there's nothing to fix. Um, mm, you are theoretically mm. exposing the connection to more mileage, which might present... Yeah. But I've seen the situations where source room was the fix. So here's a bizarre yeah. story. Two customers, and I'm going to out them, both on Xfinity Internet. <laughs> they can connect to everybody in the world and get a perfect connection. But when they connect to each other, they get nothing but dropouts. On and the each same like a, carrier? On the, same, the same ISP? Carrier. You would yes. think that would be the optimal. You would think that would be the perfect connection. Exactly. Absolutely. But no. And we're like, we can't explain this. Like, like usually, when we troubleshoot dropout issues, we're like, "All right, who's causing it?" We divide and conquer, figure out if you're sending dropouts or receiving dropouts. And here, it's like it seems like we can't. Like the only time the issue happens is when these two people connect directly to each other. So I'm like, "Why don't you try Source Stream?" And I turn on Source Stream, which is basically kicks it out to some server and back and changes the route. Hmm. And boom, it's all perfect. Hmm. Because Xfinity had some crap server either over congested and oversold or just in a bad state that needed to be rebooted. And it was just limping along, delivering every third packet that it was sent. <laughs> so, in this case, the extra mileage that Source Stream caused provided a detour around a traffic jam, literally. Typically, it's not the solution. Typically, it will expose you to more possible traffic jams and it will yeah, yeah, avoid yeah. traffic jams for you. How funny is this? I'm just looking. I've got a message on Source Connect and the message is, cannot establish a direct connection <laughs> to your opponent. Mm. Mm-hmm. That word is Source actually used. Source yeah. stream will be used instead. Yeah, there yeah. is. Yeah. Mm. Right. <laughs> that's funny. That's exactly what that is. Is So, yeah, that, that's where the opponent message pops in because it was like, we never cleaned up the error message. <laughs> <laughs> now, George, talking about the um, on a cruise ship, I thought Joe Cipriano did a session. He did from a cruise ship. Via he did a, he did an ISDN bridge from a cruise ship in like two thousand seven or six. Like, yeah, as soon he, as this he, thing came he out, he was like, like "I want a bridge." Tech like that, yeah. Yeah, and that thing had like two seconds of latency. I mean, the cruise ship connection alone was like a second at least. Well, that would more. have been a satellite, right? Yeah, I mean, because it was like like this. This, this a was a cruise ship in the Mediterranean, I believe. Yeah, and he's connecting all the way to California, and it's a, it's a satellite connection with a crap load of latency, and then you're going through a bridge, which adds at least another half second to three quarters of a second. Well, I think that's <laughs> wow. what's the most revolutionary thing, maybe about. I mean, there's a lot of revolutionary things about the uh, Elon Musk's Starlink, the low orbit it's stuff. The low, it's the low latency, the relative the low, low orbit. latency. And that low latency via satellite is a pretty 
and and being able to get that kind of upstream downstream from anywhere within the coverage of yeah. those satellites is pretty i even heard that they parked one over the ukraine to give those people internet to help them with their internet oh they can be stationary oh yeah they are they are stationary geo yeah that's right no it's, yeah. it's amazing it's, it's great use of i mean it's just you got to give them credit it's pretty for, pretty cool yeah i mean it's mm-hmm. there's i haven't talked to too many of my clients that have had it yet but those that uh need it are incredibly happy to have access oh, to it i've talked to a few customers that um you know, it's it's always the, the the person who's done well, and they've got like their house in the woods on the top of the mountain or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's like yeah. this just is the way to go. And I don't know that anybody's port forwarded through it, but um, I mean, for the most it's, part, it's you know, pricey, source stream but does it ain't work. ISDN pricey. It's a hundred I mean, bucks. It's yeah, not it's bad. not. It's like five hundred dollars essentially to get the equipment, right? If and that's like a hundred dollars a month. Yeah, it's it's not. I mean, if you're literally running a business, even a very low, you know, not a very super successful one, it's still a, a, an expense you could justify. I let's mean, let's be honest. Like the cable connections are approaching the same cost. Yeah, yeah, it's true because they go up every year. You don't you sign a contract for a year, and it's so, only for a year. So they give it yeah. to you for forty nine dollars, and then the next year it's fifty nine, and then it's sixty nine. You know, and if you live long enough, it's a hundred and seventy nine. It's four hundred and fifty thousand dollars. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <Right>. exactly, exactly. <laughs> well, Pip, have we answered your question? You have. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Sorry, I feel like I didn't have all that much to contribute. I, uh, I, I had a couple of questions there, but um, thanks for having me. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. No, it's it's interesting from your point of view. That's all. Because no. I, I, that's why I thought it would be. Um, Good to have you on because yeah. of the work you actually do, and I know you were doing the the Atmos thing, and that's right. And we do New work Zealand in two very different areas. One being, you know, recording voices for advertising, um, which Source Connect works a treat, and then also, you know, trying to hook up studios and and sending full mixes over into another studio when when people can't can't travel or be in Melbourne. Uh, the same bit of software works a treat on both sides. So that's where my questions were headed. Yeah, great. Uh, happy ending to another show. Time for a cup of tea. Or a happy ending. <laughs> <laughs> you knew that was Where are you? On that <laughs> <one>. <laughs> You've got too many kids already there. Uh. <laughs> well, that was fun. Is it over? The Pro Audio Suite. With thanks to Tribal. Recorded using Source Connect. Edited by Andrew Peters. And mixed by Voodoo Radio Imaging. With tech support from George the Tech Whittem. Don't forget to subscribe to the show and join in the conversation on our Facebook group. To leave a comment, suggest a topic, or just say good day, drop us a note at our website. Theproaudiosuite.com.